All right, so I was thinking about my collection and cards that I want to add to it, or at least try to anyway. And I come up with five cards that um, I feel are, they're obtainable, but it's gonna take some time uh, without a doubt, um, some more so than others. But um, anyway, let's get right into it. I got VCP open here. And so first up is a card that's pretty readily available and I think is a very good value uh, for a playing days Ruth card is this 1929 WA Churchman cigarettes uh, car. Now, it doesn't explicitly state it's Ruth, but we all know it is because it's taken from a Babe Ruth photo. And it's just a great looking card in general. Now, there's a lot of these available. Um, pretty common, but I'm having a hard time finding the one I want because centering seems to be really difficult for this card. Um, I went after one a few months back that was really nice, but somebody wanted it more than I did, and I got uh, jumped over at the last minute. Um, so the search continues for a nicely centered, uh, version of this car, which could be had anywhere from, I don't know, prices all over the place. Um, I think it comes down to the eye appeal, but they're generally, you know, around a thousand dollars, I think, uh, plus or minus for this particular card. So the Churchman Sports and Games number 25, uh, Babe Ruth card. And then also on my list is this other Ruth card, which has really grown on me. Um, the strip card. Now, I'm not a fan of strip cards in general because they tend to look cartoony and just goofy, uh, but this one I like. And I believe the significance here is this may be argue, arguably his first card in a Yankees uniform. And uh, it's got a blank back, and it's actually a couple other versions. It's like a numbered version, I think, um, and a type one or two. But anyway, I think the, I think the unnumbered is the most common. And... Maybe the least expensive. Um, but yeah, I just like this card. And so one that I'm targeting, there's a couple right now on eBay. One's authentic. One is, um, I think, an SGC2. But uh, a little bit out of my price range at the moment. But uh, anyway, so there's this Ruth card. And these are in no particular order. So this isn't like ranking. It's just uh, cards I'm looking to get. Here's a Ted Williams that I've been on again, off again over the years, whether or not I, I want this card. And, and I think I do. <laughs> um, I don't really care for the DiMaggio, but I like this Ted Williams. And um, it's one of those cards that I regret not buying when I had the chance, you know, pre-pandemic. I want to say there's like a three or three and a half. And it was like $1,700. And now it's probably a 3X that maybe four. If you look down here, I mean, the PSA three, for example, is 6,300 at Heritage Auctions. Um, take a look at that one. Yeah, it's a nice copy. Uh, they are hard to find perfectly centered. Uh, and I will tolerate some off-centeredness um, if it means saving a few dollars. But again, this is not an inexpensive card. Here's a three that went for 45, 60 back in August. So that's kind of like my my price range somewhere in there. But if I find a real banger that's centered, then I definitely, you know, I've, uh, I will pay up for it if, if it's the right time. Um, so, uh, yeah, another card on my list. And then here is one that I've been looking for on and off. I do want it. it it's hard to find. Um, it, it certainly isn't cheap. I'm basically targeting a, a one a one to two range for this particular card. And um, there's a nice one on eBay now and a 2.5, but it's way overpriced. Um, so here's a 1.5. So this is this is like the range I'm looking at in here, hopefully. Um, so that's not bad. Uh, centering is, you know, so-so, but considering how few cards, uh, few of this card are graded in general, I can't be too picky. You're looking at, what, less than 200 PSA and 85 or 84 SGC. Uh, so 33 DeLong at Lou Gehrig. And then lastly is a card I went looking for at the National. And had I not come across that Gaudi Ruth, probably would have walked away with this. Uh, this was, there was a very nice affordable one at a big dealer's booth that I was tipped off about. But I already committed to that Gaudi Ruth and that was it. I was tapped out. Um, so the search continues for this. I just love this card, this old timey wind up. Um, I don't have a Cracker Jack card in my collection. And uh, this is not uh, 
This is not uh, inexpensive either, but boy, this is really gorgeous. I'm not a big fan of Authentics because I don't like the idea of somebody having messed with the card, like taking scissors to it or whatever. But this this is just beautiful. This one from REA that went for, I, I think that's really great. I, I would have uh, had a been in the market at the time. I mean, this is right around, I just passed the national. So I wasn't actually looking to buy or participating in the auctions um, since the national. But this is a gorgeous looking copy, although authentic. Altered. I wonder, I'm only assuming it's been trimmed or, or whatnot. But anyway, the Walter Johnson Cracker Jack is uh, one I've been looking for for a while. So again, these are going to take time. I'm not going to go out and have, well, I'd like to add one before the end of this calendar year. Um, this would be the easiest to do because of its cost. But again, I struggle to find one where I'm, I'm happy with the centering. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, these don't come up that often. This is pretty common, I think. Um, and these last two will be, I don't know. So I'll keep an eye out. And um, yeah, just FYI, this is what I'm looking at these days. Of course, it could change. But it's, th these cards, with the exception of this one, these other four have been on and off over the last couple of years. So I feel like I definitely want to get these in the collection. And then we'll see how this Ruth search goes. But anyway, that's it. Just a quick video to talk about some sports cards and uh, some of my current collecting focus when it comes to vintage. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.